Greetings, I'm Dr. Ronnie Hopkins, interim president at Voorhees College. Listen, COVID-19, it's a serious situation. Over a half million people have lost their lives in the United States alone, and many, many more across the world, especially in African-American communities and communities of color. At Voorhees College, we want you to take the vaccine as soon as you're able to, as soon as it's available for the protection of yourself and of others. At Voorhees College, we want you to take your shot. Hi, I'm Nurse Williams, Director of Health Services here at Voorhees College. COVID-19 has significantly impacted our lives. Let's take our lives back and get fully vaccinated. Take the shot. I'm Cabral Hupp, head men's basketball coach here at Voorhees College. Give up a good shot for the shot, the shot that saves your life. Take the shot. Whether you're young or old, take the shot. I am Dr. Herman Skip Mason, Jr., Director of the Wright Potts Library, Chair of the Lyceum Committee. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to welcome you to our Lyceum program, our All College Assembly, uh, for the month of April. We are so delighted to have as our special guest, the distinguished Mr. Jared Benjamin a renowned uh, and respected uh, advisor, uh, speaker, one who inspires students to reach their highest heights. And that's what we want for the students at Voorhees College. We are so grateful that each week you tune in to the Lyceum a Committee program as we try to bring to you the best speakers throughout the country to motivate our students and to inspire you to do that which God has called you to do. So we know that today you will certainly be inspired. Our program today will proceed as outlined. We'll have the invocation by Reverend Yvonne Singleton, followed by the introduction of our speaker. Uh, then our speaker will come and bless us, and then we will have closing remarks. We pray that you will share uh, this Lyceum program to not only the Voorhees family, but those who are indeed supportive and engaged in assuring that all students everywhere reach their highest potential. That's why we do the Lyceum series. And now the invocation. Let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. We give God the honor and the glory for this time that we have for this series of lectures for our students and for our faculty and staff. We pause to thank you for a great leader in our interim president, Dr. Hopkins, and all the other staff members that make up this great college and institution. We pray for the speaker that will come forth today and for all of our students that will tune in to listen and those that may tune in later. We thank you now, God, for all things. We ask that you will continue to heal us from our situation, this pandemic, and bless those to have the mindset to go get vaccinated and also to practice those safety uh, uh, guidelines that have been established by us. We thank you now in Jesus' name we do pray. Let us all say amen.
My name is Donald J. Lauer IV, and I am the president of the Zeta Gamma Chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. I am also a member of the W. Franklin Evans Honor College. I am a senior at Voorhees College majoring in computer science. Mr. Gerard D. Benjamin is a native of Louisiana. Mr. Benjamin received his, a Bachelor's of Science degree in Business Administration from Florida Memorial University and a Master's of Business Administration with a concentration in Management from Nova Southeastern University. He currently serves as the Florida International University Cybersecurity Apprenticeship Program Director and Adjunct Professor. He currently manages and develops curriculum embed certifications for the Jack D. Gordon Institute of Public Policy. He serves as a subject matter expert on the $3 million Intelligence Community Center of Academic Excellence Consortium Grant. Mr. Benjamin also serves as the Chief Executive Officer of the lead firm. He is responsible for curriculum development, leadership training, keynote events, and serves as the organization consultant for over 120 colleges and universities across the country. Mr. Benjamin is a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, National Association of Student per Personal Administration, National Association of Student Affairs Professionals, Association of Fraternal Leadership and Values, Association of Fraternity Advisors, and the National Black MBA Association. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for today, Mr. Gerard D. Benjamin. Hello, everyone. I'm truly excited and honored for the opportunity to be before you today. Before getting started, I'd like to pay homage and respect to the university, the, the college president, uh, Dr. Ronnie Hopkins, and the great work that he's doing as he empowers uh, the students to continue to begin, believe, and become. Uh, additionally, I'd like to uh, uh, recognize the, uh, the, 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 the executive cabinet, also the Lyceum Committee, for selecting me and also allowing me the opportunity to, to share a good word with the people today. To the students of Voorhees College, thank you for continuing to strive to, to, to reflect excellence in our, in our HBCU community. And, 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 and lastly, to my good fraternity brother and friend, Donald Lord, thank you for the warm introduction. Now, Voorhees, your family. So since you're family, we're going to talk like we're family. I first have to say the truth. Uh, you couldn't have did it better than opening up with a selection that allowed me to offer a moment of praise. I do want to commend uh, those who to, to offer that song of praise. Uh, wow is what I was doing on the other end of this camera. Wow is definitely what I was doing. Um, and to the brother that opened up with prayer, thank you for, for, for seeking our, 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 our savior before I came before today. Because I tell you, you know when you're working with an HBCU, because when an HBCU invites you, they're, they're going to keep it no secret that we're going to seek our deity before we get started. So allow me to share uh, with you briefly today uh, the topic in which I thought was appropriate to share with you. As I looked through the motto, begin, believe, and become, I sat for a moment and thought, how could we truly begin at, in, in a society today where, where there's so many obstacles that are stopping us uh, as people of the African diaspora? And so I, I now charge you, and I leave this, this message today to charge you to say, don't let an obstacle cause you to, to take a break or take a time out. Let an obstacle uh, show you that, that, that there's reasons that they're trying to stop you from succeeding. So we must continue to succeed because our, our, our contributions to society are truly needed. And so as I begin my topic today and, 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 and stop in the and park in the begin, I have to first say, I know that the work at Voorhees College, the work in our community, the work in our HBCUs are needed, but oftentimes to believe that they're needed, it has to be validated. To believe that who we are and, and as when we graduate and enter the workforce, our leaders that the community could not be without, we have to validate it. What I simply mean is the hypothesis says that we are simply a graduating students to be great, but how do we validate the hypothesis to be just a, a fact? You see what I'm saying? So as I park at a couple of facts, I thought the best one to share before I got deep into the message is uh, if you take a chance to go to Black Lives Matter Boulevard and, and peek over the gate at the White House, you'll notice that the vice president of the United States of America is a product of a historical black college university. But if you allow me to stop for a moment and you clap where you are, that's a moment of validation that the work that we're doing at HBCUs are producing our leaders at the highest levels. 
And so I'm encouraging our Voorhees community, not just our students, but our alumni, to know that you need it. You need it to be change agents. You need it to change the climate and the culture of our communities. When we're not welcome to the table, I encourage and borrow a few words from Tyler Perry. I ask that you just make a table, make your own table, and sit there prepared and ready to be a change agent. Me, myself, in the early birth of uh, of my company, the lead firm, to be quite honest, I didn't see a promising success ahead of me. I, I remember when I only had spoke at four schools in the first year of a business. I was I was discouraged, but I knew there was a need for what we brought to encourage people of color and institutions who needed a word from us. Well, let's let's guess what, y'all. Now we're at approximately 150 to 200 schools a year. Not to share it as a testimony of what I have done, is to show you that we're needed. That's that's a validation on the hypothesis. In fact, to go even further on the validation, I did a little work in looking at Voorhees. For every student that may have a moment of discouragement, I want to share with you in that community called Voorhees, they have a professor for every 15 students. What that shows me is uh, you have an institution that's establishing a classroom that can have relationships versus situationships. I coined that term a few years ago because I saw it valuable to distinguish between the two. A relationship calls for communication. That means that you have to communicate to foster relationship. And so teaching at my institution, I can tell you, sometimes I have students that don't decide to use office calls or don't decide to look at the syllabus. And because they didn't foster a relationship, they have to rely on a situationship in hopes of success. Well, I want to encourage the community that we establish relationships in the classroom, out of the classroom, with our faculty, our staff, our alumni, and our community. Because relationships will be what gets us into the workforce. Relationships will put us in leadership roles. Relationships will cause us to give back to our institution financially so that we, we, we break social economic gaps so that more students can afford to be there and less students can have a financial obstacle that stops them from being there. So where do we begin? To be quite honest, we begin in recognizing that relationships are important. We begin in recognizing that we must foster relationships within our community. So where conflict lies, communicate through the conflict and allow the relationship to champion the conflict. I get overly excited anytime I can speak to a school at the end of the year because I love to challenge narratives that are false. And so in, in preparing for my, my, my talk with you today, I, I've read a few narratives that have been challenged. And I want to first uh, uh, credit Dr. Ivory Tolson, who wrote a book some time ago, challenging the myths about people who look like us today. And so I want to challenge a myth. Uh, one of the questions posed is, are there more African-American men incarcerated than there are in institutions of higher learning? And, and because of the narrative that we've been we've, we've been we've been pushed for years, some would believe that there actually is uh, more people incarcerated that are African American men than are being educated. But I want to present some facts to validate that that narrative is yet false. In 2001, we had 693,044 African American men enrolled in institutions of higher learning. Ten years later, as we examine the facts, we have 1,445,194 uh, African American men uh, in, in institutions of higher learning. That that exceeds the prison population of African American men uh, over 11 percent. And so I bring that up to tell you that don't allow narratives to be painted that are not fact filled when you can control the narrative yourself. So what does that mean? We cannot allow celebrations to be parked on social media when we have our African-American men and women graduating from institutions of higher learning. We can't allow the party just to be in the house. We must control the narrative and celebrate these successes as they happen and encourage our alumni to know that we are celebrating our next generation of future leaders. Who would have thought in the 80s when Sister Harris graduated from Howard University that here in 2021, she would break down gender barriers and, and racial barriers and be the first African-American woman that resides in the White House as our second in line to the president? Who would have thought that an HBCU would have produced that type of leader? Well, me as an HBCU alum, I, I share with you, I believe it can happen. We're just a little late on it happening, but I'm excited that it did happen. 
As I examine um, uh, what she could have went through, I want to pay homage and, and to, to, to Sister Chilsom. Uh, most may not remember her, but I think this is a great time to give a history lesson as well. In the 70s, she was the first African-American woman to get a primary uh, 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 endorsement and nomination from a majority party when she aspired to run for president. Although she was not successful in her run, I share with you that she made a pathway for others to come behind her. Although it took over 30 years for the pathway to produce the result that we, we desired, I share with you the pathway was important. I share with you your family, so I got to give a family story. When I was a young child, I used to walk from school in Natchitoches, Louisiana. And my mother would always tell me that you must uh, ensure when you walk your little sister from school that you do not take the shortcut. The shortcut for my people who from the country, you know, shortcuts in the country. Sometimes you got to go through a graveyard, maybe through a few, few woods, but it would save me about 20 minutes in walking. So, yes, Jared still took the shortcut. Mama, if you're watching, I'm sorry. And so what happened was, y'all, in taking the shortcut, my mom wasn't concerned about my well-being. She didn't want the safety of her daughter, my younger sister to be compromised. And so what I, what I want to share with you is, is when I had the conversation with my, my sister, I simply said, Jasmine, I need you to follow in my footsteps everywhere I go. So as we were going through the shortcut, what happened is I took the blunt of the sticker bushes. On my forearms, there happened to be a lot of scars and scratches. When I got home, my mama didn't give me a firm talking to. I told y'all I'm from the country. My mama gave me a good old talking to. Those who are, are from the country definitely can relate to where I'm coming from. My mom informed me that she did not appreciate me uh, 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 letting my, my sister take another route and I take the shortcut. Well, I was confused in conversation and I share with my mom, mom, how did you uh, think that I would allow my sister to take another route? Well, she shares with me in that moment, she had to take another route because you're the only one in the house with scars on your forearm from the sticker bushes. Well, then I unpacked the conversation more. Now, believe it or not, y'all, I was talking, but I was still in fear. My mama definitely knew how to be a disciplinarian. So in fear, I shared with my mom, no, mom, you misunderstood in totality. In fact, I did not send my sister another direction. I simply gave her instructions. Wherever I walk, whatever path I make, you must walk behind me because it allowed me to take the blunt of the abuse from the trail. So, so then my mom began to see the bigger picture. She said, so you were in front of her the whole way. Well, why do I share that with my Voorhees community today? Oftentimes, uh, the pathway that's established will, will allow the person that comes behind us to not take the blunt of the abuse, the blunt of the racism, the blunt of the oppression, the blunt of the obstacles. So I'm encouraging the leaders, even the leaders that are in their collegiate experience, my SGA leaders, my MPHC leaders, my Royal Court leaders, the alumni, I'm asking you simply to ensure that you're establishing pathways so others that come behind you don't have to take the blunt of what you've experienced when hardship occurs. Oftentimes when you establish pathways, you won't see immediate access change. You won't see immediate opportunity. But what you will see, if you just hold on a little bit longer, like the folks say, if you just hold on, you will notice in that moment that uh, your pathway that you prepared, your pathway that you prepared for the people who come behind you is going to be beneficial to the, the, the totality of success. So I'm encouraging you to stay the journey. Don't let obstacles discourage you. Let the leadership be a staple of your walk so that you can continue to be an asset to your community and not just to your community, you make another pathway for the future leaders to be able to walk through and not incur, incur the sticker bushes or the scars or the tribulations or the trials that you encountered while you were serving in your leadership capacity. I believe if we could take that uh, ideology that we will be able to, to begin and begin with a foundation that allows us to be proper. As I park myself into the belief of this motto, I, I think about Elizabeth Evelyn Wright at 23 years old, much uh, closer to the age of the collegiates on Voorhees with a vision. If you allow me to, 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 to figuratively say, I believe she was pregnant with the vision of Voorhees College. I believe she was pregnant with the vision of Voorhees College. See, in 1924, she gave birth to that. She, she, she gave birth to the thought of that vision. And if you allow me to go to 1947, I would go as far to say she went into labor 
she went into labor because uh, at that time uh, in labor, the junior college was birthed in 1947. But in 1962, oh, did she give birth? She gave birth to, to, to a four-year college that is producing scholars and leaders today. I, I, I'm convinced she didn't just give birth for a moment. She gave birth to a moment of change. I've had the experience to be on Voorhees go and tour the entire timeline of her work. And I'm excited today to tell you that her work was not in vain. Oh, did she did she get pregnant in 24 with, with the Voorhees vision? Oh, did she go into labor in 47? But oh, did she give birth in, for the four-year college vision in 62? You must believe in what you do, even if it takes a little time to get there. The, 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 the church folks say, you just have to keep on sowing and praying and the fruition will come. Well, I'm encouraged Encouraging you to sow your efforts, sow your finances, sow your contributions, sow, sow, sow workforce opportunity to the business owners. I'm encouraging you, don't allow obstacles to convince you that boy, these scholars aren't the best choice. Oh no, I share with you, they are the best choice. Uh, examine their resume, mentor them, allow them to, to, to be an apprentice under your tutelage so that now we're producing the best, the brightest, and the greatest from this community to enter our global workforce as global change agents. Oh, we validated that the begin is necessary. We, 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 we discussed that the believe was, was very possible, but now we must talk about the become. For Jared to become, I had to dig deep in some of my first experiences as a leader. I could remember when I first got on my first plane. Some of y'all might not be able to relate because y'all might have loan money, but Jared grew up kind of kind of with socioeconomic uh, challenges. And so in my first plane ride, it was on AirTran. Y'all might not remember AirTran, but they let students fly for $40 uh, one way. And I caught my $40 AirTran flight, y'all. But when I realized uh, I was in the middle seat, one of my goals in flying on a plane is that one day I would get an exit row seat. I would get an extra row. See, y'all are not that tall. I don't want the camera to fool you. I'm 5'5", five, five, a hot 180 pounds soaking wet. I don't need a lot of leg room. I just desired the leg room. I felt like the exit row would be a part of my status. It would be a part of who I am. And so I, as, I, as I sought out for that opportunity when my money wasn't funny and things got better, I got an exit row seat. And I, I want to park there for a second. Uh, through this analogy, I've then learned the value of understanding processes. And so for me, when I got my plane ticket, I went to the counter and the lady shared with me, uh, you have an exit row seat. And in this exit row seat, uh, there's some stipulations that come. Are you over 16? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, are you willing and able in the event of an emergency to assist others around you? Of course, I just want my seat, y'all. So I get my seat. I'm running to the gate. The TSA agent scans my ticket. And then he says to me, he says, do you realize you're on an exit? row. Y'all with excitement, I said yes. And so as he shared with me, I was on the exit row. He told me I would have some responsibilities and was I willing and able. I simply said yes. And so guess what, y'all? I, I then went to the gate and I thought it was all over. I get to the gate, the thing goes, dee -dee -dee. and to be quite honest, y'all, I was very, very, very scared because I didn't know what a, a beep, beep, beep was. It was actually an alert to let her know I had an exit row seat. The young lady says, are you willing and able in the event of an emergency to assist others around you? Of course, I had said it three times before. I'll say it again. The answer is yes. I get on the airplane. I put in my AirPods, y'all. And when I had on my AirPods, I thought it was over. Well, guess what, y'all? It wasn't over. Uh, they tapped on me when I went to sleep. And she said, I need you to be awake from this moment. And I said, yes, ma'am. What's going on? She said, I have to give you a briefing. Y'all seen it before. On the plane, she says, uh, the exit rows will light up like this. And since you're in an exit row, I need to know, are you willing and able in the event of an emergency to assist others around you? Y'all, I kind of looked at it and said, mm -hmm. she said, oh no, I'm going to need a verbal yes or no. For me, it started me and I said, okay, yes. Yeah. She said, thank you. She said, now, now what, what happened is the oxygen mask will fall before you put uh, help somebody else put yours on. And then what happened is you can go assist others. If I need you to help folk get out the plane, I'm going to be relying on y'all in this row. Well, why do I bring that up today in our conversation? I bring it up because there's some leaders in our community. I need you to transition into exit row mentality. That means 
are you willing and able when somebody around you does not have the ability or the stability to survive this leadership experience? Are you willing to uh, enter the exit row mentality? Are you willing to help others on, on Voorhees campus when they come on campus with a schedule, don't know where their classroom at, and they have that look of loss? Are you willing and able to assist? Are you willing and able to assist a graduate who does not have an idea of career entry, but they are an alum yet alone? Are you willing and able to assist? See, unfortunately, y'all, uh uh -huh just won't do. I'm going to need you to jump into the chat on YouTube, Facebook, or all the broadcasting uh, platforms platforms and simply let me know, yes, you are willing and able to execute exit row mentality so that the people who look like us, who go to institutions that embrace us, have a promising opportunity to be global change agents. I ask, will you become? So as we parked at the beginning, as we, as, we, as we parallel parked into believe, and as I turn the wheel to exit the become, I'm asking this community, to, to dedicate effort, to, to, to dedicate time, to dedicate experience in sharing that tomorrow is promised for leaders of today if they just apply themselves. And so as you apply yourself, I assure you, thank you, Sister Felicia Mason. I assure you, I thank you, uh, Brother Arthur Holmes. I assure you that the time will come where you're going to be needed. The time will come when your pathway that you made, maybe even 10, 20, or 30 years ago, uh, somebody's going to walk through it. It won't be about credit in the moment. It'll about be about how did you allow, how did you enable, how did you inspire, how did you ensure that they had a beginning? How did you uh, motivate them to believe when they had imposter syndrome telling them they were not worthy? How did you ensure that they became to ensure that all would be well? Well, I'm sharing with you today, it can happen. It can happen. Of course, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be remiss if I didn't share a message with biblical content because I'm, I'm talking to an HBCU with religious affiliation. Again, thank you to the brother of prayer. Actually, something was birthed in my spirit when I, when I, when I received this opportunity to speak and I saw uh, the, the selection today. So I want to leave you with this as we, as we come near a close in my conversation with you. Uh, there was a time when when Moses was given an assignment to, uh, to, 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 to gather the ingredients for anointed oil. And come to find out in my research, I learned that there were two major ingredients, one uh, of a myrrh that, that was actually a bitter taste. And there was one of cinnamon uh, scent that was actually that of a sweet fragrance. And, and, and for me, I noticed that there was double of one in, 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 of, over the other. And what, what comes to find out to make the anointed oil, both of them had to be put into the ingredients and then the oil would then be blessed and anointed. Well, what I learned is it was double the amount of, of, of bitter than it was of sweet fragrance. Why do I find that to be important? I share with you, even in the Bible, uh, there was opportunities where there was double the instances of bitter before we got to our sweet moments. So if you're in a moment of, of discouragement right now, I challenge to myself to encourage you to simply say, you may be in your bitter spell, but I assure you, your sweet moment is on the horizon. Maybe you had to finish your a collegiate experience during a pandemic and you felt like that was a bitter situation. But do know your graduation is on the horizon. And guess what? I assure you that that's going to be a sweet moment. Maybe you didn't get into the organization of, of choice. I want to share with you, your sweet moment is on the horizon. Maybe you applied for a job and you're a senior and you haven't got that interview yet. Your sweet moment is on the horizon. Maybe you got a balance at the bursa office. Hold on and apply to scholarship because your sweet moment is coming. To our community leaders, just know this has been unprecedented times for our students. I ask that you pour in virtually, you pour in financially, you pour in with support so that each one of these students that may have encountered a brief bitter moment can then have a sweet moment. I assure you in my faith-based belief that if it worked for Moses, it can work for you. I encourage the Voorhees community to keep on keeping on. And as I prepare to end uh, my conversation with you today, I want to share with you something that I find vitally important. Oftentimes, when you don't control the narrative or tell the story, someone else gets to pick the narrative for you. So I encourage you, when you have moments of success, don't keep it a secret. Tell the narrative. If you have moments of breakthrough, like the church folks say, testify. If you have moments that would inspire somebody, inspire them. To my students that are watching today, if you see somebody with their head down on campus, 
Motivate them and encourage them. If you can do it, they can do it too. I share with you my experience. I share with you my thought process. I share with you my faith, all to wrap it up into the belief that I know the change agents are on the other side of this broadcast. Continue to grow, continue to build, continue to saturate yourself into success. There's no one who can build a moment of doubt. You have to build that moment of doubt. So let's not accept it. And, and like my mother would say, I simply rebuke it. I know that in this season, we're needed like never before. In this season, we're needed to be change agents like never before. I trust science, so I encourage you to ensure if you're able to take the vaccine, let's do it. I trust, I trust, I trust the work of the community. If you please wear your mask, please social distance. Because guess what, y'all? If we got through a pandemic in 1918, I'm certain that we'll get through a pandemic in 2021. I'm inspired by your work. And, 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 and thank you, Brother Marion Wright, for your servant leadership to Voorhees as a director of student activities and engagement. Your work has not gone unnoticed. And I do appreciate you. And, and, and as I leave and pass the microphone back to this, this great host, I want to share with you this last thing. It really, it, really, it really hit me to let me know that we have to do this as a, as a people. We have to remember. We have to remember. We have to remember that we hold and we own our success. And when you look at the deed on success, are you going to ensure that you can transfer success to the next generation? Or are you going to rip the deed up so someone else has to start over from scratch? I encourage you to pass the deed of success, transferred into the hands of our future leaders, transferred into the hands of our student leaders. Because today is only the start of what tomorrow holds. Thank you so much for the opportunity. On behalf of Lead Firm, I wanna first say thank you Voorhees for our continued partnership and relationship. Thank you for the time to be before your, 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 your august audience today. Thank you for the warm introduction. Thank you for the attendees that attended. Thank you, Dr. Ronnie Hopkins, for your servant leadership as you ensure Voorhees Colleges be begins, they believe, and they become. To my fraternity brother, I'm incredibly proud of the work you've done on Voorhees, not just for my introduction, but for the sterling example that you have set as a student leader on that campus. Like the good folks say, it ain't overly intellectual. It's just true to heart. Just keep on keeping on. Again, thank you, and I yield the floor back to the rest of the program. It's been a pleasure. Brother Benjamin, my goodness, you have tremendously blessed the Voorhees family this morning with this awesome and amazing challenge and powerful message and uh, instructions for us to become the absolute best that we can be. We thank God for you for sharing with the Voorhees family. We are grateful to Mr. Marion Wright for inviting you to come on behalf of the Lightsome Committee uh, and the college. Uh, and I know that all who listen to you and all who will hear you as this uh, broadcast will circulate throughout uh, the virtual sphere will be blessed and encouraged. Thank you again for sharing with us. And we thank you for watching and engaging today, my brothers and sisters uh, in the Lyceum series presentation. And we ask that you will continue to uh, join us uh, each week on next Tuesday. We will have our National Library Week Lyceum featuring Anna Maleka Tubbs, the author of Three Mothers, How the Mothers of Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm Etz, and James Baldwin Shaped a Nation. And then on Thursday, April the 6th, we will have our Founders Day Convocation with the Honorable Roland Martin, an award-winning journalist as the speaker. We thank you, and we know that you will tune in. Thank you, Dr. Hopkins, our interim president, Dr. Mitchell Hightower, our interim provost uh, and vice president of academic affairs, Ms. Charlene Johnson, our vice president of student services, 
Ms. Diane O'Berry, uh, our Vice President of Business and Finance, and Dr. Prince Brown, Director of Institutional Advancement, uh, for your tremendous support of the Lyceum Committee and to all of the staff, uh, including uh, Dr. Megan Freeman uh, and Mr. Curtis Sumner for all that they continue to do to advance the Lyceum program, to Mr. Willie Jefferson and Reverend Yvonne Singleton and all of the members of the Lyceum Committee. Let me thank you personally as the chair for the great work that you continue to do. Now, we invite Reverend Singleton to come uh, and to close us out as we open up with prayer. Continued blessings to you, Voorhees family. Well, God, we thank you for this time of sharing in these Lyceum series. We thank you, God, for the speakers who have come to share with us and enlighten us and lift us to higher heights. We just thank you, God, for all that, the, all the blessings that have come our way for our interim president, our interim vice president, for Voorhees College, for faculty, staff, and students, and alumni who listen in and promote the furtherance of Voorhees College, that she will stand high in this in society and others will come to find out the glory and the blessings that are hidden here in Denmark, South Carolina. God, watch over us, keep us, protect us, guide us as we enter now into this uh, Passion Week and Resurrection Sunday that we'll be resurrected to do better, resurrected to love you more, resurrected, dear God, to show love and kindness one to another. Be with us, keep us, hold us in the hollow of your hand. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, we pray. Amen. I'm Dr. Ronnie Hopkins, Interim President at Voorhees College. Listen, COVID-19, it's a serious situation. Over a half million people have lost their lives in the United States alone, and many, many more across the world, especially in African-American communities and communities of color. At Voorhees College, we want you to take the vaccine as soon as you're able to, as soon as it's available, for the protection of yourself and of others. At Voorhees College, we want you to take your shot. Hi, I'm Nurse Williams, Director of Health Services here at Voorhees College. COVID-19 has significantly impacted our lives. Let's take our lives back and get fully vaccinated. Take the shot. I'm Cabral Hupp, Head Men's Basketball Coach here at Voorhees College. Give up a good shot for the shot, the shot that saves your life. Take the shot. Whether you're young or old, take the shot.